No matter if points are gained or points are lost, there will be much to discuss. For analysis regarding tonight's Winnipeg Jets game, here are Dave Manouk, Ezra Ginsberg, and your host, Drew Mandel. The Illegal Curve post-game show starts now. Much like Nino Niederreiter shaking the hand of Nikita Chibrikov, I feel the need to shake your hands, your hand, Dave, and your hand, Ezzy, and at your hand, everyone in the chat. We've done it. Game 82. <laughs> we made it. It's the end of the regular season. We still have lots of runway ahead of us, but there is an accomplishment to be said. Having made it through 82 of these, not quite done this one, of course, but through 81 plus one started. I'll shake your guys' hands and I'll shake everyone's hands in the chat as well. Sean Monahan made it through 83 games. There you go. Exactly. He managed to one up us. I don't know how it was possible. We'll have to find some extra games to go and do to stay on the Sean Monahan level. But nonetheless, we say good evening, Winnipeg. Good evening, Manitoba. And with all of you joining us live on our social media platforms, we say good evening, universe, and welcome to the end of the regular season and the Illegal Curve post-game show. With Dave Manouk, with Ezra Ginsberg, we're all back together. I'm your host, Drew Mandel, here to discuss the Winnipeg Jets, the Williams Jennings Trophy-winning Winnipeg Jets, and their 4-2 victory over the Vancouver Canucks to end the regular season and get ready for the playoffs. Sunday evening, 6 p.m., this puck drop in downtown Winnipeg. We hope you'll all join us at City Place on Sunday afternoon for the Illegal Curve pregame show. Nice to see both of you gentlemen on this Thursday night. You know, it was uh, a game that didn't have a ton of meaning. It had a little bit of meaning, not a ton, but it was a good night for the Winnipeg Jets all in all. I would agree with that. Drew, have they officially announced the 6 o'clock start time? I mean, they have not. It's it's. We know what it is. I mean, ESPN already put that. Somebody put that yeah. graphic up, right? Like, ESPN I don't think put it up. A few things here, guys, before we get into the game, right? Obviously, you know, big night for Brad Lambert and and Nikita Chibrikov. I know that Dave felt like a, a proud father watching those guys <laughs> uh, take take their solo laps. Um, he had I mean, a lot guys, to do with their look, development. We've been talking about this for weeks, though, right? Like, if like Drew said, th- there was a little bit of meaning. The little bit of meaning being that the Jets are second overall in the West. So they they will have home ice against uh, every other team in the Western Conference except for the Dallas Stars. So that that is something. Uh, they did pass the Vancouver Canucks 110 points. Jay Fresh Hockey was off by one, but he did predict 109 <laughs> points. So shout out to Jay Fresh Hockey and, and his got mathematical so much model. About the, for doing so. Well, yeah, but I mean, look, I mean, the Jets acquired Sean Monaghan and Tyler Toffoli, and that model obviously didn't have those guys on the team. So if you think about it, Drew, if they had a couple of more wins yeah. uh, during that six-game losing streak, they they could have actually won the President's Trophy, right? Yeah. So, I mean, the Jets were not far off from the New York Rangers, right? So I think they were they ended up finishing fourth, fourth overall in the NHL, yeah. right? Fourth so overall pre- in the NHL. pretty incredible. And, you know, just going back to the the time, uh, and the date is set. Like I can't remember any other year in which the Jets were in the playoffs where there was so much speculation about when game one was going to be. And that obviously has to do with the fact that the Los Angeles Kings, the Vegas Golden Knights, they don't know where they're going to finish because, of course, they still have uh, one game left, right? So, yeah. and, and, and the William Jennings Trophy right off the bat, big congratulations to not just Connor Hellebuck, but Lauren Brassois and the rest of the team, because that's a team stat, right? Like Josh Morrissey, Dylan DeMello, Brendan Dillon, Dylan Sandberg, Pionk, Nate Schmidt, Logan Stanley. Like they all had a part in that. Uh, not something that we've talked about a lot, but it is significant because no Jets 2.0 or 1.0 tandem has ever won the William Jennings Trophy. Uh, you know, it, it's it's really hard to believe, you know, that the same team that last year was so porous mm-hmm. and- such an open invitation to the front of the net and open invitation to goals being scored against them could now turn it around with largely the same roster. It's not a, I mean, there's some differences obviously, but the back Mm -hmm. end is very similar to what it was last year. And all of a sudden this Winnipeg Jets team, and this is an accomplishment. I mean, ultimately, you know, 
does it mean anything? You know, no. In the long and the short of it, no one's going to say that if they lo- if lose in the first round, yeah, but they got the Jennings Trophy. It, it's it's yeah. you know, small solace. But for an 82-game season to give up less than 200 goals is a pretty impressive accomplishment for a team that really, by and large, really couldn't uh, keep the puck out of their own net for so long, Dave. Yeah, no, there's no question about it, Drew. And, and it's 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 interesting, right? The uh, the team that they beat, the one team that they had to go against, their old coach, Paul Maurice, and it's Florida Panthers who were sitting there at 200 goals. So it is definitely uh, an accomplishment. And, and it, as you and I talked about it, could you tell me who won the Jennings last year? No. Could you tell me who won the Jennings pretty much any year? Probably not. But it's, it's definitely an accomplishment. And I think there's a certain amount of irony, of course, being that Laurent Brassois, gets the Jets the Jennings Trophy, but Lauren Brassois' name, even though as he's right, they all have a piece of it, but his name will not be a goalie listed because, of course, he needed to play 25 games. So I think that's uh, stupid, by the way. Sorry, Dave. Just as an aside, like, who decided it was 25 games? Like, it's dumb. as far as I'm concerned, and look, nobody cares necessarily what I have to think. I think, well, Drew's, Drew's actually wow. gone because he really doesn't care what I have to say, I think he's just uh, attending maybe to his kid or a connection or something. But probably his like, internet. To me, something. David should just go to the like the team with the lowest amount of goals against. It should just go to the two yeah. goalies well, who have played the most games, right? Like, or or at least give it to the sense. goalie who uh, fifteen or twenty games. Like I mean, twenty five is just it's just arbitrary. I don't know that there's a reason. Rick Bonus, I'm saying it's so arbitrary. And at yeah. the end of the day, I really don't think that Lauren Brassois, uh cares because the team won the Jennings Trophy. Connor Hellebuck. Yes. You were there asking the questions, Dave, in the scrum. Connor Hellebuck himself said that it's nice, but it's a team trophy. The Vesna trophy, sure. of course, is an individual trophy. Yeah. Hellebuck will win that. I'm not right. I'm not just saying he's the favorite. He will win his second Vesna trophy. If he doesn't, then that's going to be something that I think we'll be talking about because it'll be a surprise. I think Drew's back here. I'm a little mm. bit worried about Drew there. What happened? He's got a white screen. It looks like at first, more importantly, this is this, this. Now, Drew, don't bring yourself back when your screen's not working. Test, test. You got to know that's that's oh, that's poor form. Okay, now it looks like he's back, but although his volume's no good, so Drew should be working on that. Stop changing angles, Drew. Or is that you, Ezzy? Did you do that? Yeah. That was anyways, me. all right, go back to the old angle. But anyways, the point I was gonna make quickly is just the idea that oh, we got Drew somehow back, but I'm not sure if he's actually back. Back. All right, he's out. Well, this show's off to a hell of a good start. We've got uh, Rick Bonus coming up. Fairly shortly, so. Uh, but I, I guess what I was going to say uh, was just this idea of now as he's throwing me off because I can't. There we go. We're back to normal. <laughs> I was like totally thrown off with the old with that other angle. That was I was going to mess with Intel, but then he wasn't ready to come back. So, anyways, no. So, but I, again, I just think it's interesting that Lauren Brassois gets the win, gets the keeps the Jets to two goals or less, which was enough to give them a uh, the, give them the Jennings, and yet he will not be recognized by the NHL. But of course. Connor Hellebuck, his teammate, talked about the fact that it's uh, it's definitely an award that Lauren Brassois, we know, played a significant role as he with how good he has been for this Winnipeg Jets team. He will not be wearing a Jets jersey next year. Uh, we'll talk about that during the summer. But more importantly, this is just a another. Oh, well, I mean, never say never, right? I mean, they would have to pay mm-hmm. him a significant amount of money. I'm just saying, yeah. I, I agree with you, Dave, that it's most likely Brassois is going to s- sign with another team. Yeah, but I'm just saying maybe the Jets give him an offer, you know, that he can't refuse. I'm not sure. Trying to, I'm not trying to be the Godfather here. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> well, yeah, anyways, but regardless, he's earned himself an, a nice raise on his yes. contract this year for sure. Yeah, and yeah, and it, but then this isn't a conversation that we're going to have in today's show. We're of course here to talk uh, on the 82nd Illegal Curve post game show of the 23-24 season, and I can't believe it's already here. And I can't believe Mendel's gone. He had his little opening soliloquy, his little monologue. And then, as he as a result, he's gone. We've got the conch. So uh, we don't have to... us, by the way, in the group chat and said, computer gremlins go on without me. Oh, well, I mean, no offense. I wasn't even looking at my phone. I mean, this is the Manuk and Ginsburg experience. So we don't, Mendel who is what I say. But I mean, ultimately, at the end of the day, there's there's a lot to talk about, right? First of all, Sean Monaghan, as, as, as you mentioned, 83 games. Jets win the William Jennings Award. You've got Brad Lambert, Nikita Chibrikov making their NHL debuts. You've By got the way, Vince, Vince is a little bit late here. Yeah, Vince, we talked about that about nine minutes. You're a little bit late here, Vince. Sunday, 6 o'clock p.m. is the start time for game one. But thanks to Vince on Facebook. Maybe some people just started listening, but yes. Yeah, of course. You got to understand it. Sometimes people are on delay. Yeah. 
But anyways, so the point is you've got the the moose call-ups, the media starting to come into the Matt Frost Media Center, so when they do, we'll head to coach, and you go hear Rick Bonus's final regular season post-game media availability. If you want to listen to his pregame, that, of course, is on our YouTube channel, so make sure you smash that like button, because I got to tell you, folks, yesterday, I don't even know if the Jets posted any of the video. You know who did? Legal Curve, your only source for the raw videos uh, that are coming out of Canada Life or Hockey for All Center. So make sure you stick to our YouTube channel. Make sure you smash that subscribe button and the like button. Uh, we may have Mindell, but more importantly, we're going to have Rick Bonus. Drew, I hope you tested your audio. hope it's working. We'll see. But we're going to get Rick Bonus. Drew's looking spacey. That's why he's a little confused that we're we're not really sure what's going on with Mindell. For some reason, he's in the chat. He should be out of the chat if he doesn't know what's was going Drew on. Was Drew abducted by aliens? I don't know, but he looked like he was stunned there for a second. So anyways, what we'll does the chat going... want? Does the chat want Drew or Rick Bonus? Let us know. Yeah. <laughs> Vote <laughs> well, for Drew gonna... or Bonus. We're going to get Rick Bonus up got Drew soon there. enough. Well, we got Rick back, but I mean, yeah, we got no, Drew Rick's back. Rick's coming up. Rick's not there yet, but Rick's coming up soon. Why? Who brought Rick into the chat? What's going on here? That was me. Okay. As you got, as I'm about to remove your ability to make any decisions right now. You, as he, listen, I will deal with Rick. We'll leave Drew out. You worry about the com- the chat. You can bring the comments in. That's your job tonight. Okay, so let's uh, let's keep this thing rolling. Let's keep this thing smooth. We've done 82 of these. We shouldn't be having problems in game number 82. But anyways, this is the Illegal Curve Post Game Show, which comes to you after each and every single Jets game, win or lose. And, of course, as, as he touched on already, the Illegal Curve pregame show coming your way on Sunday, the first ever illegal curve pregame show those will be happening for the home playoff games so however many home playoff games there are we'll be at city place uh before the game so come say hello to us and uh you can smash the like button in person maybe we'll bring a little like button that we'll put on the table as he and folks can smash it there at city place so i like it we'll uh we'll have a chat with all of you when that gets going but like i said this is game 82 and the jets win cole perfetti all the scratches five healthy scratches from last game as he back in the game two jets two of the moose pl- recalls they get into the game colin delia was the backup goaltender giving connor hellebuck a night off and uh like we said parker ford dressed in warm-up but of course he didn't make the uh he didn't play so rick bonus alluded to the fact that this morning that if there were any guys that anything happened between morning skate and of course the puck drop at seven o'clock that Parker Ford would be an option, but ultimately they decided to go with the lineup they went with. So good opportunity for a lot of guys to make an impression. We heard from David Gustafson uh, yesterday as talking about, you know, what it means to get into this game. Rasmus Kupari spoke today, Cole Perfetti. I mean, look, and you don't want, you want Cole Perfetti to feel this way. Cole Perfetti scored 19 goals and he's currently a healthy scratch. Right. As so, I mean, that's, that's a significant thing. And he talked about how his game today after the, uh, the morning skate, he, how he feels about his game. So, well, free Parker Ford, we will when when he goes back to Texas tomorrow on the plane with Brad Lambert and Nikita Chibrikov. And they won't play, I would imagine, tomorrow night in Texas when the Moose uh, are get ready to conclude their regular season. But uh, I suspect they'll be back in action on Saturday night, as he for the final game of the Moose regular season. Right, and just getting back to especially the the two players that made their debuts, obviously, yeah. Shiprikov and, and Brad Lambert. I mean, really, this could not have gone any better. Even Nate Schmidt, he picks up an assist, right? I thought mm-hmm. Nate Schmidt was looking really solid. Like, and, and we talked about it right off the top when Drew was on the show before he was abducted by aliens. <laughs> but, um, you know, this is kind of a, a tricky game, right? Like, Vancouver has a lot of their veterans in. They obviously don't have Mr. 103 points, JT Miller, they don't have Mr. 40 goals, Brock Besser. So there's some good players out on both sides. I think Rick Bonus is coming up shortly here, Dave. Yeah. So if you have to cut me off for Bones, I'm going to completely understand it. Sure. Um, but, you know, Chipperkov looks solid, right? He had the shot off of Thatcher Demko. I think originally a lot of people thought that that might have gone wide. But then obviously the replay clearly showed that Demko had to make the kind of soccer style save, right? Yeah. And Brad Lambert looked really solid out there, right? Obviously picking up an assist on Gabe Velarde's goal, but also looking very comfortable on the power play. You know better than anybody, Dave. Like his speed is just incredible to watch. Mm-hmm. And he definitely didn't look out of place. Like these guys were noticeable. So even though this is kind of a, a tough game because 
The two teams don't have a lot to play for. The Canucks already know they're playing the Predators. The Jets already know they have home ice advantage and they're going to host the Avalanche. But the Jets do finish second in the Western Conference, so, so that's good. And like you said, a guy like David Gustafson, who played really well in those games against Dallas and Colorado, he comes out. I think we got Rick Bonus here, Dave. Here comes the head coach of the Winnipeg Jets. We'll head to him, and then we'll come back to us after. Uh, despite who his lineup was to exit the game with good habits, is it looks like mission accomplished. Yeah, for the most part, the, the habits were good. We, uh, yeah, I mean, we played hard. We turned the puck over a couple of times, but that's going to happen in every hockey game. Uh, but we, again, in the third period, we, we buckled down and we got the job done. As a coach, what are you doing right when young guys come into the lineup and succeed the way did Cole Perfetti comes back into the lineup and has been kind of hitting the ground running every time he comes up? What, David Gustafson, when you've got guys coming out of the lineup, getting into the lineup and playing the way they play, what is the coaching staff doing right in that case? Well, first of all, you give Mark Morrison and his staff a lot of credit for the job they've done with Lambert and Chip Koff. Those two kids step in and they look good. So Mark is doing a fantastic job with the Moose and getting those guys ready to go. So good on him. And our and, uh, and, and you know, uh, our, and Brad and Arnie, they spend a lot of time with the guys who aren't playing, making sure they get extra work um, and pushing them in and give the guys because it's hard when you're not playing to stay motivated every day to work and give that extra because, you know, you're, you're not playing. But so the players give them a lot of credit because they did put the work in. And they, the coaches this the coaches have been fantastic with those guys. That game you played against Dallas the other night, the Dallas players said that's Bones hockey, right? You're a well-known coach for, you know, being able to implement the defensive style and be able to grind other teams. So what does it mean to Rick Bonus to coach his team to the least amount of goals scored against the season? I give players credit because the players have to go on the ice and do it. And they have to go out there every night and be committed to it. And they have to recognize when it's not working and, and go back to it. So our players have worked incredibly hard all year, and, and, and so you give them a ton of credit. The goaltending's been exceptional, as you know, and uh, but it, when things slip and, and we we address the issues, the players buy right back in and and and, and, and turn it right around. So uh, to play the way we play is hard. There's no question; it's hard. Uh, it's frustrating to play against, and I think our players take great pride in that. When they're talking to friends around the league, that geez, we hate playing you guys. You're so hard to play against. I think that's extra motivation for our players, but uh, it all comes from they, they they're committed to it. Rick, how efficiently do you think uh, Lambert and Chipperkov were able to transfer their what they were showing in the AHL through their first NHL games? Yeah, I mean, it's a good game for them to to break into because. Um, you know, they they didn't have their day squad out there, and we didn't, and they were able to get some ice time. Um, we weren't matching lines. We were just throwing four lines out there, and uh, they just felt very comfortable. So, again, give Mark and his staff a lot of credit because those two kids were ready to step in and play. And for your other uh, NH players, your others who, who were sitting that managed to get the action tonight, I feel like this is a good tune-up for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The guys that wanted to play in the – and so they wanted to, because, you know, we're starting Sunday now, as you know, so some guys didn't want to play, and that's fine. The guys that wanted to play were in there and they give the guys, uh, you know, they they had the option. Uh, couldn't sit them all, <laughs> but the guys that wanted to play, they wanted to play 82 games, and they didn't want to take too much time between now and the opener. Rick, I want to ask about the eight-game winning streak that ties a franchise record. I just want to know, have you ever been a team that's been this red hot going into the playoffs? Well, that's a good question. I think when I was in Vancouver, we were, I was pretty good, too. I, and the, the, the teams in Tampa were very good. So I, was there an eight-game streak? I, I can't remember. And what is I'm it? old man. Everybody's not as sharp as it used to be. And what does it say about your group that mo a good chunk of those eight wins came against a Colorado who you're going to play in the first round at Dallas on the road? Um, it seems like the competition from the eight-game winning streak earlier in the year ramped up as the play does. It year. did. And you go back to the national game. We were great in that game, but we were good when we had to be good. We found a way to win it in, in, in overtime, and they had been playing great hockey. Uh, it was, the 
the big confidence booster came from Dallas. That was a big confidence booster for us. We did not see Colorado's A game, so we're not going to fool ourselves and think that we're going to see next week. There's not a chance. They're a great hockey team, so we caught them on a bad day. So we don't we don't get all worked up about that one. But the Dallas game was really good. So sorry, just one more. You mentioned Dallas. I'm thinking back to the the year you took that team to the, the Cup final, and I think a lot of people didn't necessarily. Expect you, like a lot of other teams, had like a short window of time to get that team playing the kind of hockey you wanted them to play, which you did. Did you draw any parallels from the year to this year with the kind of late, you know, six-game losing streak and the way you've kind of snapped this team in right at the right time? Well, when we went back before that, the, the bubble, we, we had to make some adjustments to the... We weren't scoring any goals. We so, um, and that, so when we went to train camp that summer... <laughs> <laughs> whatever that June and July, we, we implemented some getting our defense a lot more involved uh, in offensively. And if you look at the stats from like our D, we scored a lot of huge goals for us in the bubble. Uh, and I still say to this day, had we had Ben Bishop in the net, we would have won the cup because our team game was really good. I know a lot of people were surprised that we got so far, but the team game was really good. We scored, we were scoring goals. Um, the Tampa had Bassey and, you know, who wouldn't play great, but Ben Bishop, when he's on, he's the top three in the world. So uh, we really missed him in the finals. Good. Thanks. There he goes. Head coach Rick Bonus. I don't know if Drew Mandel is back. I will say Fingers one thing, crossed. though. Fingers I, will say one, I will say one thing, as he, when Rick Bonus said, I don't know how many people had it hit them getting that far. This guy had him this far. If you remember, I picked Dallas that year in September when we did our our IC discussion. So let's try and get Drew, back. For how many years is Dave going to keep talking oh, about yeah. that? Like, I'm riding Dave, that one for a while. That was four years ago. Like, man, I'm living in the past. You're living in the past. I won my playoff hockey draft. As he, I'm yeah. living in the past. So anyways, we're going to, we're going to get this thing. First of hold all, on, big show. Second, the, Dave, you're not the host anymore. No, no, I yeah, know, I'm but back. I'm, I'm, I'm back, well, baby. One second, one second. Yeah. I'm still hosting. I have going to okay. toss you back the conch. Big thanks to Colby though, for, all year long, getting this worked out so we could have uh, the coaches' media availability. I think we started doing it around, we, we talked about it at the beginning of the year. We got it around game 40 or 50, but uh, we really appreciate Colby figuring it out and getting us to that, uh, adding a feature that no other shows uh, bring you. So big thanks to Colby. And of course, that will be available in on our YouTube channel. So thanks, Colby, for that. Of course, you'll be expecting that as well in the postseason, but uh, we appreciate him doing that uh, this regular season so with that i bid you adieu as the host <laughs> and return it to drew mendel drew you bid a it drew. A, a do and, and bring back a drew so yes exactly. i am back hopefully my there's a lot of doo-doo coming from the top of the screen right now that's what's <laughs> hopefully my uh, internet will not uh sketch out any further than it already has uh so i apologize for that first time for everything the internet itself was just went all haywire in the house so i had to do a, a hard reset but guys i do have a little bit of good news well maybe not so much for you but for me as well you guys were away somebody pulled up into my driveway and i have to say it's unusual that i get deliveries at 10 o'clock at night except from when they're from our friends at Boston Pizza. Look at that, boys. Whoa. Boston Pizza just dropped off some great food to me. This is the new... Uh, hang on, I got to see it so you can see it on the camera. I don't know if that's great, if you can see it well enough there. This is the new Sicilian square footer pizza. Ooh. It's half savory bandera bread and half of creating your own pizza. I went with the Dave Manouk pepperoni and bacon special. So I'm going to have that to nibble on throughout the rest of this post game show as well. So this is all part of the new Boston pizza playoff menu. That's getting you ready for game one of the playoffs. We know the playoffs, of course, will get underway on Saturday. The jets will play on Sunday, not officially announced, but all this great food, courtesy of our friends at Boston Pizza. I can see the jealousy pouring out of Ezra Ginsburg right now. I'll be honest. I could go with a Sicilian square footer. By the way, the Sicilian square footer pairs well with watching The Sopranos. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Very, yes. And, and, indeed it does. So, big and By the way, Drew, why did they deliver the pizza at 10 o'clock at night? Well, they delivered it so that we could talk about it on the post game show, Ezzy. It's oh, part of the oh, you know, okay. it's part of the whole, you know, look at that, look at this. Pretty look sure I just saw a light go off over Ezzy's head. 
Yeah, yeah, I like never it. Never mind. Never mind the light. Ezzy somehow is leaving your studio and going to run to my house as quickly as humanly possible. So I I'm love it. Yeah, I, I'm definitely going to come over after the post game show and and take care of those leftovers, Drew. I, I might let you on the property for this one time and one time only. But in any event, big thanks to our friends at Boston Pizza. They are, of course, there's whiteout parties in effect at each and every Boston Pizza. You can win playoff tickets. You can win a grand prize trip for two to the Stanley Cup final. Boston Pots Pizza and Michelob Ultra are giving away P1 lower bowl playoff tickets for every home game. So be sure to check out your neighborhood Boston Pizza. Come play off time while well, I check out the Sicilian square footer pizza, let me tell you, as we get underway. Drew, this, take, a few, back. take a few bites of it, Drew. Everybody wants to see you chew. I, I, I don't. I'm don't, starving, actually. I, so actually I mean, I'm jealous. Swallow that pizza like a duck. I, I exactly swallow it whole. Who needs chewing? Chewing is <laughs> overrated. No, anybody can chew. It takes a skill set to be able to swallow a pizza whole. If you know without... what I still have on my phone, Drew eating barbecue for Richie's bachelor party in Nashville, like <laughs> eating a big, like a, like a big Cuban sandwich or something. Like every so often, I just watch that video and it just brings me so much joy. When there Drew's enjoying food, it brings me joy, and then yeah, I eat and then enjoy food. It's the little things in life. Let's get into it. It's the Betway game recap on this game number 82 of the NHL's regular season. The Betway game recap. Big thanks to our friends at Betway for their continued support of the Illegal Curve post-game show. Uh, and, of course, the Betway game recap. Betway is the safest place to place a bet out there. It's also the sports betting app that puts you, the customer, at the forefront with a large selection of betting options and sports as well as strong promotions and fair odds. What are you waiting for? Head on over to Betway and bet your way. Must be 19 years or older to play. Please play responsibly. The Vancouver Canucks open the goal scoring in tonight's contest, a makeshift contest, of course, of players young and old to all of these rosters. Connor Garland, a not a young player necessarily, but a guy who's been around, of course, spent some time with the Arizona Coyotes before he ended up with a the Vancouver Canucks. He opened the scoring one nothing at the 522 mark. Uh, this one was a, more of a fluke than anything nice. Uh, the puck is put into the middle of the ice uh, by Dakota Joshua, if I'm not mistaken. It's mm -hmm. on the stick of Dylan DeMello. DeMello goes to clear it away. Instead, he clears it right off of the shin pads of Connor Garland as he passed Lauren Persuade to give the Canucks the early 1-0 lead tonight. Well, yeah, and as Dave knows, he was there for the at Canada Life Centre for the first two periods, right? Nikita Chibrikov kind of does the backtrack. He, he actually coughs up the puck, right? It goes back into the jet zone. And again, Chibrikov makes up for it. For his first NHL goal, but you know we still got to break down this goal. It turned out that uh, you know the Canucks didn't end up winning this game, but you know look, I, and there's some nerves there, but For you sure. know that's kind of a, a sign of a player that maybe you know just doesn't have as much NHL experience. So yeah, it, it's you know a, a lucky goal. Uh, Dylan DeMello whiffs on it. Unfortunately, at that time he went from plus forty five to plus 44 just incredible <laughs> i realized that our apologies to garrett hole for the plus minus stat but i mean plus 45 is still an incredible uh stat even though if it might be a bit of a flawed statistic so um yeah i mean look it, it wasn't a great play by nikita chibrikov it wasn't a, a great play by dylan demello but as we talked about fortunately for the jets um you know the canucks weren't able to uh put another goal past uh lauren bressois in that period and the Jets ended up shortly after tying the game up. But again, you know, just kind of not the best puck management uh, by by Chibrikov. And then, you know, give uh, give the, the Canucks credit. You know, it was a hardworking goal. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I'm not sure why that goal was unassisted, by the way. Well, I think because they, I, I assume well, that, they ruled that DeMello got possession of it. Yeah. I mean, it you was Hoaglander. That... Hoaglander made the play. To, that he was the one who was who was forechecking. So to me, Hoaglander should get a, a an assist. But I guess because Demello touched it, but whatever. Yeah, Demello got enough of it that they ruled a change in possession, and uh, ultimately it ends up as an uh, an unassisted goal for Connor Garland to give the Canucks the one nothing lead. And you're thinking, you know, five twenty two in the game. You're really from from a Jets perspective, you're looking for a good performance by the young players, and you're looking for. Uh, and you're looking to check about the Jennings Trophy, and so an early yeah. goal for the Canucks is not what the Jets wanted, Dave, uh, as it pertains to the uh, to the Jennings Trophy conversation. 
Sure. And then, you know, the, the joking uh, in the press box was whether, you know, Lauren Brassois, because he wouldn't be able to have his name on it, was he going to intentionally sabotage <laughs> the Jets and give up three or four goals just uh, for for spite? But, uh, of course, he did not do that, and he's a pro, so we knew he wouldn't. But, yeah, I mean, it's just it's an unfortunate circumstance uh, with a guy who's been as steady as he has in Dylan DeMello, and, and uh, he puts that. It was definitely assisted. Just the assist goes to a Jets player. Well, well, yeah, and I his- thought, you know, just, you know, we're going to get into the Gabe Velarde goal next, obviously, but mm-hmm. I thought that, you know, this was a pretty even first period. I would probably give yep. the edge to the Jets, not a huge edge. I think if I remember correctly, the shots were pretty even. I think like nine, eight throughout the first like couple of periods. Right. Yeah. And, you know, so like Sean Monahan had that chance on the nice feed from Nick Ehlers. That was in the first three or four minutes of the game. Right. Yeah. So at that point in the game, even though, as Drew mentioned earlier, like, you knew this game was going to be a little bit off just because you had so many regulars out of the lineup for both teams, yeah. right? So, like, it, was, it, it wasn't the most intense game, right? Like, obviously, you know, you had Gabe Velarde and Nikita Zadorov going at it in the third period. You had the big hit by Nikita Zadorov. Uh, who was that on Monaghan? Niederreiter. No, Niederreiter. There you go. Niederreiter got right up. So, I mean, that was just a, a nice hit. You don't see hits like that. Like, that's like a hit you would yeah. see in, like, the 1990s. Or the 1980s. Well, as he, as he appropriately, it was retro night at the arena, so night. everything was 90s theme. Yeah, yeah so no, no, it makes a lot of sense. And and look, I, I don't care what anybody says. Zadorov should have gotten more than two minutes for that cross-check to the neck. I know didn't it didn't... Did he overreact? Don't... Didn't it seem well, like a I, wild I overreaction? Like, honestly, like, the Department of Player Safety is not going to do anything about it. But, like, is that not a one or game, two-game suspension? Like, he cross-checked, he cross-checked Velarde in the neck. I, I just didn't like. I mean, uh, yeah, Velarde gave him a little shot. I just thought that Z- Zadorov just went a little bit cuckoo there with the reaction to the, yeah. uh, you know, the shot from Velarde. Yeah, yeah no, Velarde, Velarde, got... Velarde gave him a little love tap, Drew. It's not like yeah. it's not like Velarde. It was like a a malicious two handed slash. No, it was it, a, yeah. it was just a little poke. And he probably got him in a spot above the pads and below the, you know, sort of in that soft spot um, where the wild fans think, I think it was Stanley got uh, Kiprizov uh, or maybe it was Brendan Dillon, where Brendan Dillon got Kirill, uh, Kirill Kaprizov, Kaprizov earlier yeah. this year, sort of in that where there's no real padding. But whatever it was, I thought uh, Zadorov really did, uh, you know, a little bit of an overreaction because all of a sudden the camera was, which was following the play, you know, and yeah. I'm not, this isn't a criticism. All of a sudden the whistle blew and, and you, and you went back over and you saw, you saw uh, Zadorov just, uh, and, and, and Velarde just wrestling with each other on the edge. You saw like re- Velarde's like legs flailing just about flailing. trying to get out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was odd. Get off uh, of me. Yeah, <laughs> get exactly. off of me. I scored a goal tonight. I want to go get another one. What are you doing? It was all very odd. I'll tell you what is not odd, though, gentlemen, is this jalapeno popper dip that I got also courtesy of our oh, friends. Right. Oh, I, want to see, I want to see you enjoy that. Food yeah, porn right here. In here. Oh, that's food porn, stuff. folks. Go. Oh, God. Mm. Now, t- turn your mic off, at least. Nobody needs to listen to you, like, smatter, smacking your lips, Drew. For God's sake, it's a family get some program. In your beard. Yeah, get some in your beard, Drew. Oh, God. <laughs> Baked Canadian cheese, jalapeno peppers, smoked bacon, and garlic served with signature cactus cut potatoes. All part of the new BP playoff menu. Boy, let me tell you, folks, I might not make it to the pregame show on Sunday based on all the food I got here from our friends at Boston Pizza. The best part of that, Dave, is Drew wasn't wasn't reading that. It looked like Drew was reading that, but he actually just knows that off by heart. (laughs) (laughs) I've memorized it ahead of time. Uh, the Jets tie the game uh, about yes. uh, six minutes after. Uh, get, I'll get it's going to be back, back and forth between my eating and the uh, and the game. Clearly, recap. we understand. Yeah. I'm kind of wishing your internet wasn't working right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gabe Velarde ties it up six minutes and four seconds after the Vancouver took the lead. Uh, his 22nd of the year assist to Alex Iafalo and of course Brad Lambert. Great for him, first NHL game. He gets his first point. And it's a nice cycle by the by the Winnipeg Jets. They're moving the puck around. It's up at the point with the defense. And then Brad Lambert, just a very smart play. Get it in deep. Don't try and do too much. Sometimes young players, first game, they want to make a big impression. This one, he kept it simple. He's got it in deep. Alex Iafalo, hard on the forecheck. He gets it out back in front to Velarde. And then Velarde shows the patience necessary to outweigh Thatcher Demko, flip it over him, and tie the game up at one, Ezzy. Yeah, you mentioned. Yeah, I, I don't. I can't add too much. I thought. I think that was pretty good analysis, even with jalapeno poppers in your <laughs> a little bit weird there. But yeah, it's a nice little poke to Brad for by Brad Lambert. 
um, to get the play going in the corner there to, to Gabe Velarde. And like Gabe Velarde, it's almost like he, he pardon me, it went to uh, Alex Iafalu who had the cross. Yeah. I believe it was uh, Carson Susi boys, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but yeah, it was a nice, nice aggressive forecheck by I- Alex IFL, a nice little poke to Gabe Velarde. It was kind of funny. It's almost like, you know, Gabe Velarde went around the circle, like the entire circle over Demko and just outweighted him. And we've seen Velarde do that type of stuff, right, Dave, so many times in tight, right in the power play where he has the puck around the, the goal line, where he'll take the puck from his backhand to his forehand or forehand to backhand. Yeah. He has the ability to just have a lot of patience and creativity. Uh, so it was a really nice play by Gabe Velarde. But yeah, nice for Ayafalo, obviously, who doesn't usually play with Velarde. With, with Shifley and Connor out, he gets the opportunity uh, to play with Velarde. And yeah, I like, I liked, you know, the just the energy that Brad Lambert brought to that line. Like there were a couple rushes he had. And there were a few times where, you know, he lost the puck. But as we talked about earlier, like his speed is noticeable. And this is a guy who factors in for the Jets' long-term plans, right? Like, I'm not sure if he plays all 82 games with the Jets, but I, I would imagine, Dave, he's going to play probably more games in the NHL, um, certainly than he did uh, this year. Obviously, that's a joke because he only played the one game. But I think Brad Lambert is going to be uh, in the NHL sooner rather than later, whether it's next year or the year after. But yeah, just beautiful patience by Gabe Velarde and just a nice nice, nice work by Alex Iafalo behind the goal line. Yeah, and I, I was just going to add that, you know, with with – it really depends on what they do with the second line center position right now, right? As he over the summer, and if they bring yep. back Sean Monahan, then it allows you to insulate Lambert. And I think what's probably best for Lambert is one more season in the A. Selfishly, of course, I say that, but no, I, I do think that they'll. And again, but I agree with you as I think that that's one of the things where he starts in the A, perhaps like Kyle Connor, yep. you know, and goes back, plays in a little bit in the A. Yeah, yeah, do your little thing after Drew. But the point is that you've got an opportunity for a guy who's really found his game, right? Remember, he was in the American Hockey League for 14 games last year, had a, not a ton of, I think he had two goals, one assist or something like that. Got sent down to junior, had a really good run with the Seattle uh, Thunderbirds, of course, won the WHL championship, went to the Memorial Cup, and then came back here as a center, not as a winger, and he's had a great run with the Manitoba Moose. And we should mention, as he named to the all-rookie team for the AHL uh, yesterday, He's second in rookie scoring in the American Hockey League. He's rising up. He tied uh, for second in AHL for the all-time uh, rookie points lead. So he's having himself a really good season. Nikita Chibrikov also, uh, I should mention, is is tied for, I think, sixth in rookie scoring in the AHL. So they're both having excellent seasons. But you're right. Lambert definitely uh, factors in. And, you know, the one guy we should mention since he scored the goal, Gabriel Velarde, as he. 22 goals in 47 games. He had 23 and 63 last year for the for the Kings. So just imagine if Gabriel Velarde doesn't suffer that injury in game three of the season, how, I mean, it's crazy to say it, but how much better this Jet season may have been with him uh, for, a, for a longer stretch of time and, and healthier. So, I mean, he, he easily could have scored 40 goals this year. So he's been, a, he's been a, just a significant add since he's been healthy. We've seen what the Jets have done. And uh, yeah, the Jets have a one all one all game thanks to Brad Lambert's first NHL point. Yeah, and great for him. It's always nice to see a young player get at least a point in their first game because it's something they'll certainly remember, and then they'll they'll remember it regardless. But then to be able to get a and point in it makes all that makes it all that much more special. Well, and I just want to mention his parents were in the crowd. That's pretty awesome. You know, his uh, his mom's uh, I think his. I think his dad lives in Canada. His mom's in Finland. Mom, by the way, I didn't realize who his mom was until I saw her on the broadcast. Nice enough to hold the door open for me while we were walking into Canada life. So I didn't realize <laughs> that was who it was. She was just a very nice person. She held the door open for me. And as we were walking into through security, so uh, kudos to, to Mrs. Lambert. And, uh, and nice for them to be able to see their son get their first NHL point. 1-1 one, one after 20 minutes. The Jets uh, take the lead for the first time in tonight's contest early in the second period. 55 seconds in Cole Perfetti getting his 18th of the season. Uh, assist to Mason Appleton and Nate Schmidt. And you, we know that he has a nice shot. We've seen it on display before, but this one was a really nice... Uh, it looked like Thatcher Demko didn't even react until it was already past him. Uh, nice setup from Appleton. Perfetti into the high danger zone and his snipe uh, beats the Canucks all-world goaltender to give the Jets a 2-1 lead. 
Yeah, it's a beautiful shot by Cole Perfetti, but also an awful line change. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm watching, I'm sitting there watching the game, and I'm sure Dave up in the press box, everybody was talking about that as well. Elias Pedersen was out there, and and it's what was it 55 seconds in? So I guess it was towards. Seconds. You know, they they started the Pedersen line started off. Um, it was uh, was it Pod Colson lost the puck. But because Pedersen goes off, but also I believe it was Susie because the D pair was Susie and Tyler Myers, right, Dave? So Tyler Myers, Susie goes off as Pedersen's going off, and then all of a sudden it's a three on one when it really shouldn't have been, right? So bad line change, but also just a great goal by Cole Perfetti. As Dave mentioned, that was his 18th at the time. Then he obviously gets the empty netter for his 19th, um, but just great for him because we know, you know, the struggles Cole Perfetti, Dave, has been well documented, right? Started mm-hmm. off the season second line center, then second line wing. Then he was on the fourth line. He went through a big scoring drought. Drew, feel free to take another bite of that pizza if you feel like. What, um, what about the hang on? What about the wings? The chili lime wings? Should I take oh a bite God. out of those? What, How much what food did, I, did you get, Drew? Did they did, did they send you a Billy Minor pie too? I, I, they, they didn't send me a Billy Minor pie, but these are the the garlic chili lime dry rub wings. I've Curtis never hated Drew more than I more than I hate him right now. Oh, Dave, Dave, where's the spirit of love and generosity and nice Gil Morgan? You know, look at this. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that dry rub on the on those. All right, Drew. Here, I got a bit. I got a good idea for everybody. Drew, take a bite so we so you don't have to talk right now. (laughs) I I was gonna save these ones for Ezzy, but uh, I'll show you the I'll show you the pineapple ones in a little bit as well. BP sent you a, a chocolate brownie too. They didn't send me a chocolate bread. I thought that would be a little bit uh, greedy if I asked for that as well. But this is all part of the new Boston pizza, new playoff menu, getting you ready for game one of the upcoming playoffs, which will, of course, not officially get underway on Sunday for the Winnipeg Jets, but unofficially, <laughs> officially on Sunday. We'd Jets- also like to, I, I think I can mention it, right? We can go public with this. I'd also yeah. like to welcome Ozempic as our newest sponsor <laughs> for the Jets playoff run. <laughs> yeah. That's well, you know. You can take the good the I can say I that, right, guys? They're not going to sue us. If I anything, they'll just give me Ozempic for free. You That's yeah. $500 a month. Just as an aside, my doctor did happen to mention Ozempic when I went to we go We had this us. conversation before. We oh, already we? talked about this yeah. on air. Sorry, Drew. I mean, we see each other so much now at school that I really have no more original thought. There Anyways, the one thing I was going to mention, though, to, yeah. to add to Ezzy's point was the fact that Cole Perfetti is, uh, with his 18th goal, was just two away from hitting a $212,000 bonus. So, uh he was slightly motivated and you can hear it in his voice. You know, you know that, and, and, you know, Pascal Vincent always used to say this stuff. As long as you don't bring a bad attitude to the team, you don't want guys who are not playing to be satisfied with the fact that they're not playing. So you hear that, you hear that when you talk to guys like Gustafson and Kupari and Cole Perfetti, it doesn't come across as sour grapes. It's that they're, they're, they're wanting their opportunity to play in these games. And Cole Perfetti said it to us, before boys, like the four games that he was playing before he got scratched, he was playing some good hockey. He was scoring, he was contributing. And then, you know, he, he gets pulled out of the lineup. So good for him for the, you know, coming in and having an impact uh, in today's game. Yeah. Exactly right. I mean, you know, it's it's not not an easy situation for any player to be in, especially a young player. But it's sort of you know, Cole Perfetti had finishes his year with 19 goals. I mean, exactly. anybody who w- wants to throw the baby out with the bathwater, I think, is maybe fooling themselves a little bit. 19 goals, and I still think the future is very bright for Cole Perfetti, even though he's never going to be, uh, even though he's never going to be six foot four. I, you know, is the reality yes, of it. By the way, to Doug's, to Doug's point, player. who put that comment up? For those listening on the podcast, yes, I guess at 5'9", 245 pounds, I might be morbidly obese. I mean, I'm... Hopefully I'm, not I'm, morbidly. Well, yeah, not morbidly, but uh, yeah, I, I, I guess I am obese, but I'm not, I don't think I'm obese-genic, but I, I I definitely am a little bit on the heavier side, but... Just more going, of you to love, big boy. Yeah, going... <laughs> yeah, that's what Naomi says. Going back <laughs> to what we were talking about before, though, uh, the Jets might... Cole Perfetti might end up playing in the playoffs. If the Jets go on a long run... Sure. Sorry, guys, I'm just breathing a little heavily. SOBs people do <laughs> breathe a little bit heavily. But um, you know what I mean, though? Like, Perfetti could play in the playoffs. I mean, injuries do happen, or, you know, you have to get a, a different player in because you need some maybe more of an offensive player on the fourth line. Yes, now Perfetti and Gustafson are your quote-unquote 13th and 14th forwards, but that's all I'm saying. So the fact, Dave, to your point, that Perfetti is playing well at the end of the season 
doesn't just bode well for the 25-26 season and the 27-28 season. It bodes well for this current playoff run, right? Like you want to have guys that can come into the lineup and contribute it, contribute. Mm-hmm. And that's what you have with Perfetti and Gus. Yeah, absolutely right. I agree. I agree with everything you just said. Uh, the Canucks tie the game on the power play at the 17-11 mark of the second period. Uh, it's Elias Lindholm. He gets his 15th assist to the Norris Trophy winning Quinn Hughes. 75 assists for Quinn Hughes this season Ooh. from the Canucks back end. Think that's any he good? He gets the Norris, huh? He gets the he's Norris. Get, he's getting the Norris. Yeah. I mean, I like, mean, Kale we'll be... McCarr, I think we'll give him no, a run for his Yossi money. No, I think finishes but... second, I think. Yeah. Fair yeah, enough. I mean, I, I yeah. you know, it hasn't been as. I'm not going to argue with that, Drew. You know how much I I like Yossi. We just saw him against the Jets, right? So yeah. if Yossi finishes second, but I think Quinn, I mean, he's had a magical. I mean, he's just unbelievable. You, for, you for saw what he was doing at the at the, you know at the Canucks blue line, just between mm-hmm. like he dangled to Foley, right? I forget if that was the first or the second, Dave. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, if Quinn gets the Norris, it's very well deserved. Yeah. Uh, anyways, he gets the primary assist on Elias Lindholm's 15th of the year. And then Connor Garland getting his second point of the night. Uh, and it's, you know, a, a, sort of a textbook power play goal. Uh, Elias Lindholm is in front of Laurent Brassois causing some chaos. And he gets a deflection on the shot from Quinn Hughes. And that ties the game up with uh, just over uh, two, two minutes or just under three minutes to go in the third period. Dave, pardon me, second period as it's mm-hmm. two all after 40 minutes. Yeah, and it's funny because just before that, I was talking about how uh, the the Jets got lucky that that they didn't get in on that Lindholm deal because Monahan was looking a lot better than uh, Lindholm, and then he scores a goal. But I still think Monahan was is the better addition for this Jets club, and I know that uh, Lindholm has had a bit of a rough go in the in Vancouver. I'm trying not to make eye contact with Drew. I'm looking down at Ezzy right now as I'm steaming. I am Adam. looking at, I am watching Drew like a hawk. Like I am watching every yeah. single movement. Like I can't I'm even make eye contact every with single Drew. bite. I'm like, I literally can't even look at Drew right now. And I'm just staring at Ez. And then as he's just staring, it's, it's, we got quite the little triangle going Drew, on. Drew, right is there now. a defibrillator in your house? Like if you, if Laura needs to use that, is she upstairs on standby? Like ready just to, to give your heart a few shocks? Yeah. Well, anyway, so it, yeah, it's it's a tough play. I mean, it's it's a power play goal, and the you know, I mean, it's again though you've got you're missing Lowry, and and that's a big part of of the Jets PK, and so it's it's not one of those plays like really it's just uh it's 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 unfortunate. It's a nice tip by Lindholm. They're creating some chaos in front of Laurent Brassois. Well, and Dakota, and then, it was Dakota Joshua, I think, also that was yeah. in front of the net, right, Dave? Like there was yeah. a lot of bodies in front of Brassois, and. Yeah. Did I believe Quinn Hughes? Um, he hit the post earlier on that power play. If I'm not yeah, mistaken. they they hit the they hit the post already in the first period. It was an outside post, and then they'd hit yeah. the post. You're right, Ezzy. Uh, uh, again in this in this period, but and it's kind of funny too, Dave, that, that we were talking joking about this, but um, you know, it's it's kind of funny how the hockey gods work sometimes, right? Like that puck was it was it was rolling, like it was. Yeah. It, that's why Brassois didn't have his Brassois, as we know, he can handle the puck really well. But the puck yeah. was rolling a little bit, and that's why it went out. But it's kind of like the hockey gods were, to me, were kind of like, you know, it looked like for a second there that Persuan might let in a third goal because he made a really good save late in the third period there. Um, I think that was on Hoaglander or Pod yeah. Colson, I forget, when there was a little bit of a scramble in front of the Jets' net. But, I mean, but you're right. I mean, it was a nice low shot uh, or relatively low shot by Quinn Hughes and a nice tip. And just a, a yeah. lot of traffic in front. But look, I think the Canucks have the 10th ranked power play in the league. Like you forget, like I was saying to Dave, the Canucks didn't really look like interested in, in tying this game. Like this was <laughs> this wasn't a very desperate team. But at the end of the day, the Jets, we got to re- re- remind people with 110 points, they finished second overall in the West. So again, if the Jets avoid playing Dallas in the second round, they'll have home ice versus whoever it is, Edmonton, Vegas, the six other teams in the Western Conference. So again, the fact that the Jets were able to get the two points in this game and find a way to win, it actually does mean something if you're able to get out of the first round, which I think a lot of people think the Jets can beat Colorado. Or if they get to the Western Conference, if the Jets get to the Western Conference finals, they would be guaranteed. Now that's obviously a, a fair ways away, but they would yeah. be guaranteed to have a home ice advantage in the Western Conference final because that exactly. means they would have Dallas beaten the Dallas Stars yeah. in the second round. So, I right. mean, again, shades of 2018 where two of the top teams in the league 
the, that being the Jets and the Stars, if the Jets yep. get that far, are going to face each other in the second round. Back then in 2018, of course, it was the Jets and the Predators. And those, yeah. if I recall correctly, weren't they 1 2 in the league that year? Yeah, it was 117 points and 114 points. Yeah. So the two top teams in the league faced each other in the second round, which is why there's a fair bit of, uh, you know, maybe momentum or an argument to be made that the current playoff system isn't uh, necessarily uh, designed to get the best teams as far as possible. But whatever, that can be dealt with at another day in time. The Jets know that, you know, in order to get to where they want to go, they're going to have to beat the Avs and then they'd have to beat likely the Stars. I mean, with all due respect to either the whoever the Stars play in the first round. Again, a ways away from that being an issue. Two all after 40 minutes, 20 minutes to go. The Jets can't afford to give up another goal if they want to be the Jennings Trophy winners solo. One more goal means they would tie with old friend Paul Maurice and the Florida Panthers. And the Jets do get on the board early in the third period. It is the game-winning goal. It's his first goal as an NHL or in his first game as an NHL or and it's also our Seagram's shot of the game. The Seagram shot of the game. Hang on. I'm I'm going with the old, you know, I think I'm just really channeling Chris Farley tonight with my Drew, uh, this with, is self destructive behavior. Him. It is a little bit of self-destructive behavior, but it's just small amounts of self-destructive behavior. I'm you know, used. To, I'm, I'm used to being the one that's the self-destructive behavior, the <laughs> the overeating and the and the drinking, right, Dave? Like this is this is like Bizarro World, yeah. where Drew's eating wings and Bandera bread and all this stuff, but. Yes, I'm I leaning love, love. into the bit today is what I'm doing. I'm really leaning like, into the bit if you if you want. No, we have to celebrate. The Jets hit 110 points, finished second uh, in the Western Conference. You got to celebrate. I'm celebrating we did 82 post games. I think that's something to be – that's an accomplishment. So I'm celebrating yeah. on behalf of all three of us, but I'm celebrating for you guys nonetheless. Yeah, and uh, you didn't murder me for another 82 games, so <laughs> that's go. always a good Still thing. Still time come playoff time. Uh, big thanks to our friends at Seagram's for their continued support of the Illegal Curve post game show. This, of course, is Fireball. It tastes like heaven. And, and it burns like hell. Big thanks to our friends at Seagram's for their continued support of the Illegal Curve post-game show. <laughs> Sorry. That is a great comment. Sorry, C Mac, you got me there. That's a live, that's a live laugh that you just got me to do there. That is a great comment. I don't know if you want to read that for the podcast, but it's okay. Uh, Anybody Drew is a picture of health if the picture was of a garbage dump. <laughs> <laughs> this is not my typical behavior folks i can assure you of that i'll be back on the peloton yeah. uh tomorrow yeah. morning uh, like normal uh nikita chibrikov his first uh as a member in the nhl as a member of the winnipeg jets assist to nino niederreiter uh and again just a great hard-working play by by niederreiter and he gets it out to chibrikov and dave you can attest to chibrikov's skill set you've seen it more than anybody in the city of winnipeg but the puck is on his stick and off his stick pretty quickly goes far side on thatcher demko it's the game winning goal and the celebration the exuberance you could feel it through the television and good for the kid getting his first goal in the nhl first of what should be a whole bunch of goals to come yeah, and I was just reminded that it's very dissimilar for his first goal in the AHL, which was from center ice as he where he flipped it in on Dustin Wolf. So not exactly a slouch, but he flipped it in when the Moose were playing the Wranglers from center, and it beat Dustin Wolf. And uh, that was his first AHL goal. His first NHL goal, a little bit nicer, a little more memorable one. He'll talk about, and turned out to be a game-winning goal. So that's a significant one for Nikita Chibrikov, who. You know, it's funny. He's doesn't. He's not as heralded as as Brad Lambert or Rutger McGroarty. He's not a big guy at about five ten, but he's he's intense and he's tenacious and he plays with um, an edge for a guy who's not big, and and he's got a good shot. So you know, you see the shot uh, on this goal right as he, but you see the tenacity as well. This, the fact that he goes in on a hard forecheck, the fact that he's a bit of a disruptor, goes after Demko and causes him to cough up the puck to Nita Ryder, who gets it back to Chibrikov, who finds some some good ice. And again, he ends it with that good shot. So all the all the elements of his of his kind of good characteristics that we've seen over the course of this season in the American Hockey League, where he's got 17 goals and 29 assists in 69 nice games. So very, you know, it, again, it's been really like that, Drew. So you like the fact that he's just doing I'm what very it's juvenile in, tonight. 
All right, good. So the fact of the matter is that he's, you know, he he gives the goal the Jets that lead, and good, good on him. Good celebration. He'll remember that one forever. So uh, there's a lot of excitement on the bench. I know the Moose guys that were in attendance, some of the Moose communication staff and uh, Brain Trust were in the building watching their young guns, uh, you know, have an opportunity to make an impact. So, uh, like I said, they didn't just play, they had an impact in the game, and that's significant. So he puts them up 3-2, and like I said, it's just, and it's an example of what he's been doing all year long. And, and again, one of the things I wanted to mention is it's not something he's done a lot of. I looked at his numbers from last year when he was in overseas, didn't have a lot of, I think he had one goal in the KHL, in the uh, MHL, which is kind of like the American, the, sorry, not the MHL, the VHL, which is like the AHL version of, uh, in Russia, he had, he had decent numbers. And then the VHL, which is like junior, basically he had, he had better numbers, but he, he's not been a big goal scorer over in Russia, but he's come over here. And he, like I said, he's produced quite a bit. The thing that stands it, out to me, Dave, and, and sorry, Drew, I was just going to add is that like, he really hunts that puck, right? Like, yeah. and you know, Demko clearly, it was Noah Juleson who was playing with Quinn Hughes and Demko definitely misplays it a little bit, but I think it's because Ch- Chibrikov brings speed and he's pressuring Demko, right? Because mm-hmm. it looked like Demko wanted to go to Juleson and Juleson wasn't sure if Demko was going to go to him because he had Quinn Hughes as an option. And then obviously, you know, uh, Chibrikov gets it to Nino Niederreiter and Niederreiter backhands it back. And, and pardon me, Chibrikov backhands it to Niederreiter behind the net. And it's a really nice play by Niederreiter and just a... Uh, uh, you know, a goal scorer's goal, right? Like Chibrikov mm-hmm. on that shift looked like he wasn't going to be denied. And to your point, Dave, and, you know, I'm not going to pretend like I watched him more than a couple times this year. You've watched him almost every single Moose game, right? Like this is a this is a player who has more than just one or two strengths to his game, right? Yeah. And, and that's why I think he was rewarded. Rick Bonus said uh, earlier today that, there's a reason why they picked Nikita Chibrikov and Brad Lambert, right? Like it could have mm-hmm. been a lot. I know some people were upset uh, about Vili Hainala. I also think that maybe the reason why Hainala wasn't recalled, Dave, is because you had Nate Schmidt and Colin Miller both going in, mm-hmm. and I, the Jets wanted to take out another regular. That's just my kind of thought process. Like I don't know how seriously they considered calling up Vili Hainala, but that would mean that one of Dylan DeMello or Dylan Sandberg in theory would have come out of the lineup. Like, I don't think they were going to take Logan Stanley out. You know what I mean? Like, so yeah. that's maybe why that was the thinking that, you know, they, they decided to, to call up the extra forward versus the extra defenseman. But I don't think that that's a, a slight on Vili Hainala. Like, I don't think they're punishing Vili Hainala. You know, some people were saying that, you know, that, that reflects negatively for Hainala on, on, you know, his future with the Jets. No, Same thing, kind of Rutger to Rucker McGordy. Not no, nobody Rucker knows McGordy's going to find his ELC with the Jets guys. Like, let's let's just pump the brakes for a second. Like we talked about last post game show, this isn't a Cutter Gauthier situation. So y- yes, it would have been nice if Vili Hainala got a game, Dave. But I think you know he's more focused on you know the upcoming playoff round with the Moose. Yeah, yeah I, I, no, you're you're. I, sorry, I won't go too quick on this one, Drew. But I think it's. I definitely think as he's right. I think that. You know, Villanola has been, he's been good. He didn't have a great game last night in Milwaukee. Um, but a lot of the Moose didn't have a great game in Milwaukee where they lost that one in the last minute of the game. And that's the reason why you saw these guys playing today because the Moose may not have, the Jets may not have made these recalls had the Moose won last night and defeated the Admirals because they would have still had a chance to uh, get home ice advantage if they swept their upcoming two game set with the Texas Stars, which gets underway tomorrow night. So now instead they lost, those guys got recalled and the Moose now will be staying in Texas, an extended version because they've got the two games of the last of the regular season, Friday, Saturday, and then they play three games of a play-in series. Well, up to three games is the best three, uh, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. So they've got an extended uh, time, boys, in Cedar Park, Texas uh, against the Texas Stars. There you go. There's Dave M giving a little update about the Manitoba Moose as well. 3-2 for the Jets after the Chibrikov goal. Got a little bit hairy there for a couple minutes there with a bit of a scramble drill going on uh, deep in the Jets net when Lauren Brassois had lost the stick. But you could see the Jets were sacrificing and doing everything in their power to keep the puck out. And then just seconds after Thatcher Demko had vacated the net for the Canucks, Cole Perfetti picks off a cross ice pass in the Jets' own zone. 
zone and he goes, well, not quite the full 200 feet with the shot, but let's call it maybe what 170, something like that. He goes mm-hmm. 170 feet into the empty net. His second of the game makes it four two for the Winnipeg Jets with two minutes and five seconds to go. And the Jets hold on for that final score and they clinch top spot among all Canadian teams in the NHL this year and they clinched the William Jennings trophy as well as the team that has given up the fewest goals against in the entirety of the NHL the first time gentlemen that a western conference team has given up 200 or fewer than 200 goals against since if i i think if i looked correctly it was uh, no, that wouldn't have been it since, uh, where was it? I had it here not that long ago. Uh, hang on. I got to find it here. Uh, I think it was tw- 13, 14, maybe the Anaheim. Uh, no, I was going to say it. maybe Nashville with Pekka Rene and UC, UC Soros kind of around that 2016, 17, but that yeah, was just I a thought guess. It was Anaheim. If I looked back correct. Yes. The Anaheim ducks in 2015, 16 were the last Western conference team in a full year in a full 82 game season to give up less than 200. Hold on. Now we have to guess against. the goalies. Was John Gibson there yet? Uh, the Anaheim ducks of 15, probably... 16. Yeah. Gibson would have been there for sure. Yeah. Who's uh, the backup though, Dave? Guy bear. <laughs> I don't think that would have been it. Mikhail Shalenkov. Uh, as you are really pulling out some names here, hang on the backup goaltender. So, uh, well, looks like Freddie Anderson was there and John Gibson, Anton Kudobin was on that team. <laughs> uh, he played six games that year. So there you go. It was uh, Freddie Anderson and John Gibson were the two nice. uh, main goaltenders and Anton Kudo- Kudobin played nine games. That was a hell of a goaltending trio there for the Anaheim Ducks that year. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, again, it goes back to what we talked about before. It's so impressive how far the Jets have come from a a team standpoint defensively from last Mm -hmm. year, right? Obviously, you know, having Lauren Bressois is an upgrade over David Riddick, but the defense is essentially exactly the same, right? Like the only difference was, I don't know, that you had Logan Stanley playing a little bit more than you thought, but it was still the same top six, same right? Defense. Like You had Dylan Sandberg and Nate Schmidt as your third pair for the majority of the season, and then obviously your top 4D were exactly the same as last year. So the biggest difference to me is you had a better group of defensive forwards, and you had more of a team buy-in. So I think it speaks to, like Dave said earlier, people want Jets fans I'm talking about, not just people. You aren't just people. You're Jets fans want a long playoff run. If the Jets get end up getting knocked out in the first round, which obviously, you know, we don't hope that happens. Nobody's going to remember that the Jets won the Jennings Trophy. Or people might remember it, but they won't care about it as much as winning the Stanley Cup. The Stanley Cup is the hardware that that the Jets players, the Jets organization and Jets fans want. But again, it's just a nice kind of I guess cherry on top of a really good regular season. It was a really good regular season. The playoffs for the Winnipeg Jets unofficially, officially getting underway on Sunday. We remind you, we're going to be at City Place, downtown Winnipeg, the second floor in the food court for the Illegal Curve pregame show on Sunday afternoon. So when you're heading downtown, be sure to join us there right around, let's say, between 4, 4.30, sometime around that. Stay tuned to our social media for when we did the exact start time of the Illegal Curve pregame show coming up on Sunday. And then, of course, the Illegal Curve postgame show. And then another pregame show on Tuesday. And then whenever game three is, when we're on the road and the Jets head on the road to Denver to face the Avs, we're going to be at Boston. Austin Pizza Taylor, where you might want to enjoy some of these pine ha- pineapple habanero chicken wings that I have right here in the box, courtesy of our friends at Boston Pizza. They you should have one, off. Drew. It's been about a couple minutes since you had your last wing. <laughs> Get in there. I, when, you'll tell you what, when we go to break after the end of the Betway game recap, I'll dig in and have a chicken wing or two, but we do want to remind everyone about the new playoff menu courtesy of our friends at Boston Pizza, and of course, Boston Pizza is also giving away grand prize trip for two to the Stanley Cup final and con- in conjunction with Michelob Ultra are giving away lower bowl playoff tickets for every home game. So Boston Pizza, of course, is your place to watch the Winnipeg Jets if you're not able to be in the arena and you're not able to be in City Place for the Illegal Curve pregame show. The best part about City Place, come watch the Illegal Curve pregame show, head on downstairs, 
to the Boston pizza. It's all, it's called synergy folks. It's a synergy of advertisers tonight on the illegal curve post game show. I'm going to take a bite of something to eat. We'll go to break and we'll come back on the other side of things and do a little bit more of the nonsense you've come and you're used to for the last 82 games. Drew Mandel, Dave Manuk, Ezra Ginsburg. I don't think Dave's ever hated as much Have another wing, as Drew. somebody as much as he hates me right now. It is the illegal curve post game show. You guys ever wish for a game changer in life like finding out your favorite snack has zero calories or discovering the mute button on ezzy picture this a secret weapon for parking where you can book a spot a whole month in advance tell me more drew pre-book your parking at really low rates or maybe even for free if you use the code illegal curve <laughs> free what is this sorcery the Grid Park app. It's a real secret weapon that has affordable game day parking. And to sweeten the deal even more. I love sweets. Our listeners can use the code illegal curve to park for free. Holy Zamboni. Tell me about it. Just download Grid Park, G R Y D Park, and use the code illegal curve, all one word, to park for free. Whoa, Ezzy. Everything okay? You look stressed. Of course I'm stressed. We're moving, the house is upside down, the kids failed miserably at packing the fine china, and my life is in chaos. Chaos! Yes, that does sound like a problem. What am I going to do? Ezzy, relax. Rolly's transfer moving and storage is the answer. With 60 years of experience in moving Manitobans and a track record of exemplary customer service, one call to Rollies and your stress is gone. No job is too big or too small. Just visit Rollies.com and they will take it from there. Thanks, Dave. And thank you, Rollies Transfer Moving and Storage, online at Rollies.com. <laughs> your coworkers love you because you always make them laugh. You're the life of the party with stories that have them rolling on the floor. Or maybe you're just the quiet one in the corner with the one-liners that just slay. Do you have what it takes to become Winnipeg's funniest person with a day job? Try your luck. Hit the stage at Rumors Comedy Club, and you could be walking away with $1,000 cash. Winnipeg's funniest person with a day job. Presented by Rumors. For all the details, head to RumorsComedyClub.com. The game can change ah! just like that. Accidents happen when you aren't protected. So now what? Getting to your injury quickly can make all the difference. Help prevent them from being game changers with Linden Market Dental Center. Bonding, crowns, bridges, and dental implants. State-of-the-art treatments are available to help you get back in the game. To learn more, visit LindenMarketDentalCenter.com. Creating smiles for life. It's all over, folks, and the run has come to an end. You'll be so far away. A Canadian team hasn't won the Cup in over 30 years. And the Cup will stay south of the border. Maybe it's time we try something different. This playoff season, let's cheer with the fans we've always cheered against. Team up for the Cup at Boston Pizza. For three generations and over 80 years, Tough Duck has been making apparel that works and plays as hard as the people who wear it. From jackets to work boots and everything in between, Tough Duck's clothing can handle the harshest environments, even the Illegal Curve Hockey Show. Work to live, live to play. Visit toughduck.com. Ten forty-five Thursday evening. Welcome back to the Illegal Curve post-game show. Drew Mandel, Dave Manuk, Ezra Ginsburg with you, wrapping up game number eighty-two of the regular season, game one of the playoffs, Sunday evening, six p.m. puck drop in downtown Winnipeg, unofficially, officially at that point in time, and of course the Illegal Curve pre-game show Sunday afternoon I keep wanting to say Saturday Sunday afternoon live at City Place second floor food court 
come join myself, Dave and Ezzy, as we get you ready for game one. But of course, we'll still have the Illegal Curve Hockey Show on Saturday morning as well. So plenty of Illegal Curve coming your way with pregame shows, postgame shows, watch parties, the Illegal Curve Hockey Show, everything under the sun related to the Winnipeg Jets, covered in its entirety, courtesy of us here at Illegal Curve. Boys, we have to assume that game two is going to be Tuesday at six o'clock as well, right? No, apparently it's going to be late on Tuesday is what I'm told. Now, oh, take that with great. a grain of that, salt. That's great for our Passover seders. Well, uh, you know, yes, of course. I mean, that the Passover factor is certainly something we're going to have to discuss and figure out. So we'll what would be it be, there. nine o'clock on Tuesday then? I, I think we're looking at maybe eight, eight o'clock, nine o'clock. Yeah, 8.45, somewhere around there. That's the expectation. Yeah. My expectation right now is it's going to be late on Tuesday as well, or it's going to be early on Sunday, late on Tuesday. Uh, and the, easy, and the earliest it's going to be in Denver is going to be 8 o'clock because it's in the mountain time zone, right? Right. So I think Like 8 o'clock Winnipeg time, I mean. Like 7 right. o'clock mountain make seven time, o'clock 8 there, o'clock. But I, I, yeah. I'm expecting most of the games to be uh, 8.45 is what I'm expecting. 8.45 central time, Winnipeg starts. Uh, at least the weekday games. I'm not sure about the weekends because obviously there's more flexibility with the start times. And the schedule has not come out yet officially, so we don't yet know it for sure. But as and, soon as we have it, it'll be on IllegalCurve.com, I can assure you. Yeah, and I think we also I think they have to factor in the Denver Nuggets, of course, right? So they're... Yep. Their playoff run as well. Yep. Yeah. They'll have All arena. Factor. Guys, if this is anything like 2018, I remember back in 2018 when the Jets, of course, went to the Western Conference final. Like some of those mornings at work after <laughs> like a, a late Jets game, it was like you're kind of sitting there and you're like, your eyes are closing. So I think there's going to be a lot of Jets fans across Winnipeg and obviously other parts of Manitoba and beyond because we have folks joining us from Ontario and uh, shout out to Alberta, BC, Saskatchewan. Uh, yeah, Saskatchewan, uh, and and in the U.S. Our shout out to our boy uh, Ken Gardner, obviously in North Dakota, right? So there's going to be, I think, a lot of people that are going to be happy to stay up late and then maybe be a little bit groggy at work. But yeah, it's looking maybe I was a little bit wrong. I thought maybe because the the first game was an early start that the, maybe yes. because for TV purposes, but. I stand corrected, Drew. Well, as I mentioned on Twitter, I, I just wanted I wanted a schedule breakdown from Drew, Dave. I know that Drew loves to break down the schedule. Hey, we don't have the schedule officially, so I can't break it down just yet, but it'll be on IllegalCurve.com soon enough, and we'll break it down then. Uh, interesting point, you know, as we uh, you know begin to wrap up the, this tonight's post-game show, and of course, Tough Doc Hard is hitting comments still to come. Interesting point, in terms of, uh, and this courtesy uh, of uh, our friend Garrett Hole on Twitter, who tweeted this and it reminded me, jogged my memory, the Winnipeg Jets went an entire year without suffering one injury on their back end. They had no defensemen miss a game due to injury Crazy. this year. They had defensemen miss games due to suspension. They had defensemen miss games, of course, to, due to illness, uh, yeah. illness, and yeah. and you know moving in and out of the lineup, coaches' decisions, as it were. But in terms of actual physical injury, no Winnipeg Jets defenseman missed a game. That of in, course in, you're, you're talking about the top six, top seven, because Hanala yeah. was injured. Right. You're not that, talking about Hanala. You forget, no. guys, Hanala probably would have made the team. He's, I know said Dave, he M, Dave M doesn't forget. Hanala was excellent in the preseason. Um right. so but you're talking about the established regulars I'm talking in the about, lineup. I'm yeah. talking once you know I'm talking about from the start of the regular season. Right. So you know, obviously that injury happened, you know, in exhibition and you know and everything from the start of the regular season through game 82 of the regular season, the Jets did not have one defenseman miss a game due to injury, which is I mean that's just such a remarkable I mean, stat. Yeah, and I, the only thing I would say is that, you know, Rick Bonus has alluded to the fact that there's guys who are dealing with things. So I would imagine that there are guys who are banged up, but you're right, Drew. I mean, look, that's it 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 is a and and it's been a factor for I mean, if you think about it, the Jets had all four recalls available to them, right? After the trade deadline, it changes. Uh -huh. So you're only entitled to four recalls. Of course, you can have emergency recalls from your AHL affiliate, and the Jets didn't use them. They used them all today, but they hadn't used them before that. And I don't, again, that's another instance where we've never seen that before, where they weren't making any recalls. Now, again, they had a little more flexibility this year because they had so many, they had more guys, I think, with the team in terms of uh, you know healthy guys that were available in terms of Perfetti or Kupari 
or Schmidt and Miller. So you didn't really need to go to the moose because you had guys available who could jump in right as he, but yeah, it's been a, it's been a good year for that. And it's been a good year in terms of consistency for this group. So look, we'll see what they can Hopefully do. Hopefully that continues, right? Like, yes. I mean, if you go on a long playoff run, usually you're going to suffer at least one or two injuries. So not just the defense goaltending and forwards, right? Hopefully that continues knock wood, right? Like, but you're absolutely right, Drew. It's significant. I also think, you know, on the topic, it's significant that Cole Perfetti and Nick Ehlers were both healthy because that was a question mark, right? Perfetti's obviously had sure. a lot of injuries. Ehlers had, has had a lot of injuries, right, Dave? So yeah. it's not just the defense. I mean, really across the board, including the goaltending, there were no injuries, right? You didn't see Colin Delia or Thomas Milich play any games. It was just Hellebuck and Brassois the whole season. So you're right, Dave. There was a lot of continuity and a lot of consistency in terms of the, the players they had available. I mean, Gabe Velarde would be... The, the big one there, Kyle Connor. No, no, Connor, saw, they, they Connor had the, the knee injury, so they had a few. Yeah. But I yeah. think when you compare it to other teams across the league, the Jets were definitely, I guess, I don't know if you want to call it lucky. I, I would call it fortunate in that regard that they didn't have a lot of man games lost due to injury, especially yeah, on the back gonna, end. Exactly. I was just going to add, as you know, the one thing that we saw was that there were seven guys poised to play 82 games if they wanted to. And right. Rick Bonus mm-hmm. gave all those guys the opportunity to. And guys like Mason Appleton and Dylan DeMello, who had never done it before, it was important for them to play. Neil Pionk, he was one of the guys who played. Alex Iafallo played, so he got to 82 games. As we already touched on at the beginning of the show, Sean Monahan played in his 83rd game, which was actually crazy because he actually missed a game due to illness. So had he not missed that one game 84. due to illness, he would have actually played 84 games this season, of course, because he got a few extra games in with Montreal before being traded. And, and Nikolai Ehlers, right? And Nikolai Ehlers has done it before, but... He hasn't done it since I think 16, 17. So it's, it's a big step for him to be able to play uh, and be healthy uh, for an entirety of the year. So yeah, health has been uh, a good thing for the Jets. Again, you know, you lose Gabriel Velarde the way they did. They lost Kyle Connor. The Jets definitely suffered their fair share of significant injuries. Yeah. But it, like I said, it's, it's a whole new season. They'll uh, get a, get a, get a refresh and get ready to go. They'll, they won't have much time, boys. They're going to supposedly, it hasn't changed as far as I know, have a practice tomorrow uh, at hockey for all center. And then we'll see what they do on Saturday. We'll be able to talk about that on the legal career hockey show. And then Sunday game one. That's right. There you go. And just for the record, folks, we have no power. So we're not jinxing the Winnipeg jets, neither Dave, nor as nor I have any, well, power. technically, whoa, 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 don't lump me and as in with your little, uh, conversation for the record, drew, you brought up yeah. the injury. That one, jinx so- is on you, drew. Yeah. That, that's, that's all a Mindell folks. Remember have another wing. Ezzy and I, Ezzy and I tried to steer it back to some sort of semblance of non-conversation about injury. Drew, Drew. Drew, guys, do you remember what they said in Nashville? Mix in a water, bud. <laughs> remember Let's that? Let's go to the tough duck hardest hitting comment and wrap up tonight's post game show. The tough duck hardest hitting comment. Ezzy, we've handed out eighty-one of these. Who gets? Tough Duck hardest hitting comment number 82 in the regular season. And a, ri- a reminder that Tough Duck is on board for the playoffs, of course. They're a longtime sponsor of the Illegal Curve post game show. We're going to have trucker hats beginning on Sunday. So look forward to that. Lots of good comments. I just want to bring up a-, a couple comments that didn't necessarily win, but I thought that they were noteworthy that I couldn't get up earlier. For those unaware, Joe Daly, friend of the show, his sports card store was targeted by theft and, and arson. If you can support a former jet, I like that comment by Comet. Uh, obviously, arson is is terrible in this case, uh, theft and arson. So, if you can support Joe Daly's sports cards, they're uh, located in, I think, I believe it's St. Mary's Road or St. Anne's Road, one of the two. They're in uh, Old St. Vitale there. So, absolutely wanted to get that comment up there. And then uh, I had another comment up I wanted to to bring up here. Um, before I get to the, oh, here we go. It was from Bells, Brent Bellamy. Uh, thought this was a funny comment. We were talking about, Dave was talking about holding the door open for Bla- Brad Lambert's mom. Brent Bellamy says, I once I held the door open for Matt Dunnigan at Portage Place. He was carrying a big painting. He said in his Southern drawl, this must be my lucky day. I thought that was a pretty funny comment by Mr. Brent Bellamy. We are going to give it here though too. Somebody who I'm not sure if they've ever won the Tough Duck hardest hitting comment, but it's my favorite Sesame Street character. We're going to give it to Oscar the Grouch. The forwards bought into defensive play and back checking that, and our goalies won us the Jennings. I really think that's the biggest difference, guys, between this year and last year. We talked about it. It's the same top six defensemen, 
the big difference is, you know, players like uh, Gabe Velarde, Alex Iafallo, the newcomers from the LA Kings, you know, you obviously, you know, got to give Nino Niederreiter and, and Vlad Nemesnikov credit as well, because they joined the, the Jets late last season, obviously, but like that comment from Oscar the Grouch. So Oscar the Grouch, you win tough duck, hardest hitting comment game number 82 send me an email ezra at illegalcurve.com with your mailing info and tough suck will ship out a toque to you and that's the last one because the weather's getting nicer out and we're switching to trucker hats so look forward to that and that is the tough duck hardest hitting comment for tonight trucker hats come playoff time also reminder the illegal curve ot pool which we run Mm -hmm. on our x account so on our twitter account at illegal curve be sure you're following us there Every time a playoff game goes into overtime, send us who you think is going to score the overtime winner. If you choose correctly, you may win a prize package courtesy of our friends at Rumors Restaurant and Comedy Club. So that's not only for Jets games. That's for any and all overtime games come playoff time. The Illegal Curve OT Pool. Hashtag ICOT Pool. Use that. Love that. Get your predictions in when you see games go to overtime exclusively on our Twitter slash X feed at Illegal Curve. So you can look forward to that. It's been a fun regular season. Dave M, yes, go. Well, it's been a show about prospects, right? We talked about them uh, extensively, right, as throughout the course of the day. So I think we have to do one more shout out because uh, Jacob Julian, the 2023 fifth rounder, has back-to-back hat tricks for the London Knights. And they, I believe, clinched uh, again. So they've They've been, uh, he's been ridiculously good. His numbers have been unbelievable this season. He was a fifth round pick and uh, he had 29 goals, 49 assists, 78 points in 67 games for the Knights. And in the playoffs, as he eight games so far, seven goals, five assists, 12 points total as his London Knights beat Kitchener. I think they swept them. So uh, if I, uh, yeah, they won, I th- or they, sorry, they didn't sweep them. They won four threes. So, uh, the London Knights, I know they're a good team. I'm not going to pretend like I've been watching the OHL, but want to make a mention when uh, Jets Prospect has back-to-back hat tricks. Definitely something we should be mentioning here on the Illegal Curve hockey show or post-game show or IllegalCurve.com. I want to get one more shout-out in here. This isn't for a Winnipeg Jet prospect, but this is somebody who's from Manitoba. As a lot of you know, I work for Hockey Manitoba. From Dominion City, Manitoba, Denton Matejchuk, who was drafted right before Rutger McGroarty, He was drafted, Matejchuk was drafted 12th overall by the Columbus Blue Jackets. He's a defenseman. He has 17 points in eight games. I repeat, he has 17 (laughs) points in eight games for a defenseman. So he's averaging two points a game. So uh, yeah, shout out to to Denton. He's going to have a a long NHL career uh, in front of him. Wanted to get, I'm not trying to one-up you, Dave, but it's all good. we're talking about players, junior players having great runs. So Matejchuk is really having a special run with the Moose Jaw Warriors. A quick look at the out-of-town scoreboard. It's Games are still in action. The Golden Knights playing at home. They need one point in order to clinch third spot in the Pacific Division. Uh, they are, pardon me, they need a win in regulation to clinch a third spot in the uh, in the Pacific Division. They're currently trailing the Anaheim Ducks 3-1. The That's wagon. In the third period. Yes, the wagon that is the Anaheim Ducks. So the Ducks are up on the Golden Knights 3-1. Chicago and L.A. are tied at 1. If Vegas was to lose in regulation... And they play Dallas, if, right? Then they would... Uh, and, and L.A. earns at least one point. Then L.A. would play Edmonton and Vegas would play Dallas. Oof. So that would be sort of... That's a, the way I uh, wanted. I, I Secretly, I kind of... Not secretly, I guess, if I'm saying it right now, but I kind of want it to be because I like L.A. and Edmonton because they played each other before. Yeah. And I love the idea of Dallas and and uh, Vegas. I think that'd be a fantastic that's, series That's well. not a good uh, first round opponent no. for the, the Golden Knights. That yeah, I think you would much rather play the Oilers in the first round. I think the Oilers yeah, could easily... Uh, beat the Kings or the Golden Knights in the first round. But I mean, and that goes back to the inconsistent season the Golden Knights have had, right, Dave? Well, like they've they've kind of yeah. been 
never mind that, but from Dallas's perspective, Dallas would much rather face Los Angeles than than Vegas. I mean, there's yeah. I think I think if you guys and we can talk yeah, about I it would on agree Saturday. With that. Yep. We'll, we'll talk about this in more detail on Saturday when we get into the playoffs and we get into the Jets and Avs in minute detail. But to me, in the Western Conference, the LA Kings are the are the weakest of all the playoff teams in the Western Conference. No I would agree with that. Ending. I would agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. They're the team that I think is probably the easiest out. Uh, for any team in in the first round, uh, but so if you're Dallas right now, you got LA as your opponent. You're happier with that than yeah. potentially playing against the Vegas Golden Knights. I would suggest who are certainly going to all of a sudden magically be healthy. Of course, <laughs> come playoff time, hey, like they are each and every year. Drew, all all PLD has to do is just you know play like he did against Austin Matthews that year that the Blue Jackets. <laughs> Uh, played the the Toronto Maple Leafs in the first round, right, Dave? Yeah. PLD just has to do that against Connor McDavid. I think that's you know not that hard to do, shutting down the best player in the world, right? Right, easy peasy, no then no no big deal whatsoever, no problem at all. Saturday morning, the Illegal Curve Hockey Show, nine a.m. will be here on our YouTube channel. Then Sunday afternoon, the Illegal Curve pregame show here on our YouTube channel. Sunday night, game one, the post game show here on our YouTube channel. That's my way of saying, if you're not already doing so, subscribe yep. to the YouTube channel. Subscribe to the podcast tell your friends tell your family the best place to be before every winnipeg jets home game after every winnipeg jets game and again on saturday mornings is the illegal curve youtube channel big thanks to our sponsors of course our friends at boston pizza who have provided me with more food than i know what to do with looks like my kids are gonna get lunch tomorrow way to go kids you get some of that delicious boston pizza for lunch tomorrow thanks so much to them and of course Head on over to Boston Pizza. The whiteout parties will be in full effect. Get your brightest, whitest, and bring your crew to team up for the cup at Boston Pizza. Big thanks to them. Big thanks to our friends at Rumors Restaurant and Comedy Club. Our big thanks to our friends at Grid Park. If you're looking for a place to park, it's going to be a madhouse downtown. Do it now. Book your parking now. Go on the Grid Park app. Use code Illegal Curve. This is the best get... time to use Grid Park, by the way, because hey. parking is definitely going to be scarce. It's uh, going to be at a premium, uh, yeah. so do it yeah. right now. Go on the Grid Park app and take care of that. Our friends at Linden Market Dental Center, Zappia Group Realty, Betway, they sponsored 82 of these post-game shows. They have more to come here as we get into the playoff season. Our friends at Tough Duck, we went from toques to trucker hats, so don't go anywhere. Tough Duck, hardest hitting comments all playoff long. I mentioned our friends at Seagram's. I shot down some fireball before. Rolly's transfer, they might have to haul my carcass around based on all the food I've consumed on this post-game show but i know they're up for the challenge if they can move your piano they can move my carcass and of course farmery beer because they of course made illegal curve lager thanks to all these fine businesses for their continued support of illegal curve hockey thanks to all of you for joining us for all the post game shows whether you're brand new and this is your first of the regular season 82 or you've been with us for all 82 and saturday mornings we love you all just the same and we're going to keep doing it on saturday morning uh, during the playoff run all the way through you know that illegal curve doesn't sleep and we don't sleep as long as you keep joining us so we appreciate all that thanks to my colleagues dave and ezzy it's been fun it's always been a wild ride we keep the ride going it's now into the fun part with the playoffs underway we'll see everybody saturday morning 9 a.m back here on our youtube channel if you haven't already done so smash the like button leave us feedback and subscribe thanks for everyone for joining us until saturday at 9 a.m we wish you good night and good luck and thanks for watching the illegal curve post game show